Hello, and welcome to Achievement Hunting 101. This is level 251. I am Big L, and here with me today we have Kushmos. Well, hello, and hello, salutations. Kushmos. Oh, oh, some pig. We have Matrok. Good evening. And subbing in for Foo Foo Cuddly Poof, who is currently watching a movie instead of hanging out with us. But he did tell me that tickets are cheaper on Tuesday, so I gave him a pass. We have with us here the illustrious Wild West. Oh, wait. Oh, uh, hello. And I want to know where my invite was to see Thor Ragnarok. Sorry. I put it in the trash where that movie belongs. <laughs> Um, it's a couple years late. I sent you the laser disc, <laughs> so it should be arriving. It should be arriving shortly. Make sure to send the laser disc reader or whatever it's called. <laughs> the reader, the, yes. I, don't even, I don't even know what you had put in there. Well, it's a laser disc um, player, obviously. I had VHS. I didn't have laser disc growing up. I'm not that old. No, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. It just came, came after the intro. It did come after. Yep. Oh, did it? Oh, I, <laughs> it yeah. just lasted a much shorter <laughs> and less significant amount of time. It was a DVD the size of a record, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. I so, have seen them. It's just I thought they were yeah. VHS we had growing up. I didn't have laser discs in school. Or yeah, they they were. I think they were like a thousand dollars. I had a science teacher in junior high school that clearly had already checked out at that point and just showed us films on laserdisc like he went by mr laserdisc in the school like that was literally all he did really yep he's like dang it i spent thousands of dollars on this thing you will watch these movies and you will enjoy it <laughs> right he was probably three months from retirement or something which like, <laughs> you know, you'd see him rolling that big giant cart for people of a certain age you know what i'm talking about with the big tube tv on it yeah. you knew it was gonna be a great oh, yeah. day you hear that rolling down the hallway oh mm-hmm <laughs> substitute teacher did you have one of those neat substitute teachers yeah i had a couple of those i knew it <laughs> <laughs> yes so, I, so, I, did, I did have a laser disc player uh growing up i don't know how we got it because we didn't have anything nice uh so <laughs> my dad must have it must have rolled off the back of a truck or something um <laughs> and, and we had like zulu we had amadeus and <laughs> wow. maybe, maybe star wars like, this is the only movies I remember being on Laserdisc. Oh, my dad had the Star Wars on VHS. That was like a two-pack for each movie. Because mm. they were so long. Yep. <laughs> I was just going to ask, did you have to flip them over? I don't remember. I think they were basically just big CDs. Um, I don't remember the first DVDs. One side, full screen on another side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, one of the, like um, Goodfellas, the first... Goodfellas DVD, you had to flip over to watch the second half. Like, oh, wow. They were still perfecting the technology. You know, I hate putting a DVD in and then you have to sit through the warning and the warm up uh, for the menu. The Jeopardy screen. Uh, <laughs> that blue Gosh, screen. What a horrible technology. <laughs> so, speaking of horrible things. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Thor. Thor Ragnar. <laughs> All right. We have a fun show for you today. And we have, of course, the question of the week brought to you by Kush Moose. You want to read it? Sure, I do. If you go back in time and give yourself one or two pieces of achievement hunting related advice, that's key. What would it be and why? Skip Windows Phone, of course. Don't bother getting the cheap (laughs) gamer score games or always test on an alt. Whoa, good question. Thank you. Let's see if we can get any good answers. Uh, We start off with... MDP, who, of course, says something Rocket League. Oh, wait, it's a real answer about Rocket League. He said, I'd go back in time and tell myself to start playing Rocket League in 2015 instead of 2020 when I started. I would be so much better and probably experience a lot more growth than I can't, could today. Um, what kind of growth are you talking about? Like skills at the game? I wonder if you'd ever start achievement hunting at all if you played five years earlier. But here's a question. Is there any games that y'all have that you wish you would have started earlier? Kind of like that. That is a good question. Hmm. 
the one hmm. game they kind of put off and just were like, oh. oh, I'll get to it eventually. And then you started it and you're like, man, I wish I would have done this. Why sooner. didn't I play this sooner? It could be yeah, my entire backlog. It probably could. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's that's a really good question that I need time to think about it. Because I, I can definitely think of like... yeah. That could be its own in, question. In some way, like I'm going through that now a little bit with playing Forza Horizon, where I'm like, I'm really enjoying it and I'm kind of getting close to the end. And why did I wait three or four years between? But it's not that I put it off for any negative reason. It just was other stuff going on. I think that's yeah. that's a good question to dig into in the future. I'm sure there are really great answers for that. Oh, that's just, uh, yes, I, when he was reading it, I was thinking about that. I was like, yeah, I'm sure there's some games out there that we all wish we would have played earlier. I yeah, mostly games answer. with server shutdowns yeah <laughs> i think it's gonna be the common thread <laughs> yeah but uh, you know uh, it, 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 playing them or just chasing the server shutdown mm. well you know we i know we've mentioned this before but the army of two dlc that prompted us to start playing the game that was shutting down actually seemed like it was fun to play so you know in a different world it would have been nice to do that beforehand but i get the feeling that the server shutdown is going to be the common thread where you're going to hear stories like that i'd say rumbleverse was like that too like that was actually a fun game uh, and mm-hmm. that, you know uh knockout city was fun too and it only discovered those because of the shutdowns right uh mdp also had a secondary answer that said avoid simul playing any game even if it is with your friends I mean, it that's drastically obvious. ruins the flow of the game and takes all the fun out of playing because you just sit around and wait for 80 percent of the time wow Shots fired at Big L. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, we um, played an Arts Monday game together along with, uh, I don't know, there was like six of us at one point. I, mean, I think Fug was there, Mental was, was there. Uh, uh, Mental, your brother maybe. There yep. was a lot of us doing it. was one time we did that, like six of us. So I'm going to go ahead and actually agree with you if it's too many people playing a single player game, but I don't know. I mean, I guess you really feel strongly about this because I don't think I've talked to you since. <laughs> <laughs> you have, <laughs> have disappeared, Mark. I think you defriended me after uh, taking too long to d- complete a mini game and uh, <laughs> whatever Queen's Quest we were playing. Yeah. Michelle and I used to sign a lot of games, but I think mostly we do uh, co-op games now, strictly. Mm-hmm. Either two-player, three-player, or four-player. But there's a time and a place. You play that type of game that you can read a guide or tell the other person what to do. Michelle tells me what to do. Get it done together. So it's done on two tags instead of just... All right. Do we have more answers from patrons? We do. Ahizo says, don't put off Mass Effect Infiltrator. It will haunt you forever. I am imagining that is the Windows Phone game that uh, no one can ever play ever again. It stops that series completion. Hmm? Stops that series completion. That's correct, Michelle. Well, that's to your point, Wild West. That's exactly the to... question you were setting up. Oh, I think he... <laughs> I think he meant a game that you I know, enjoy yeah. and saying, oh, why didn't I play this years ago? I think that was more to Wild West's point. But was it last week or two weeks ago that I made the point that we seem to harp on the things we didn't get to experience rather than all the great stuff that we have experienced? It's just, I think we all act like this. I'm sure you missed a very crappy game, Ahizo, and you're probably better off for it. That's that's my my gut instinct. Otherwise, they would have ported it elsewhere. Aruterex says, circa late 2018, he's going to have a talk to himself. and says, hey, Chris. Oh, wow. Is your name Chris Reacher? I knew it. You should probably sign up for that BCM contest. It's a lot of fun, and you'll get to play great games you would never normally play. All right, well, for those who don't know, BCM is the Better Completions Matter Contest that Iron Fist of Snuff hosts. And it's got its own channel in Achievement Hunting 101 Discord. Now, you have to sign up for it in the beginning of the year to earn access to it. And I think it was just announced that it will return next year, and it might be taken over by uh, EOJ. So keep an eye for that, but... uh. BCM basically means that it encourages people to play games that are harder or at least not super easy games, games that are over a 1.2 ratio. And while it does that, there's monthly things you can do, like uh, complete games in the same genre or and gives you a random game each month to uh, complete. And you get points for all these things. And eventually, 
all of these things add up and, and they determine a winner. But even if you don't want to win, it still encourages you to play great games you would never normally play, as Ruth Shrek said. So I do get it. I do think there's a time and a place to uh, play some easy games, as we'll get to a little bit later. But overall, I get why this would be a popular thing amongst amongst the uh, masses, especially now with the infiltration uh, of uh, all of the easy games. As far as my answer, I almost forgot to answer it myself. My big thing would be probably to finish what I start and not buy so many games that I'm not going to get to before finishing what I already uh, have. And that could be games that could either be full price or dirt cheap I have sitting on my backlog. And that's ridiculous for years and years and years. Maybe it's in a hang-up because of achievements, where if I just finished the story and moved on, I might have gotten to more games. But achievements also made me play games I wouldn't have played, so double-edged sword. But I'd say overall... I would tell I would tell 2006 Big L to finish what you start, buddy. And stop buying that game just because it's on sale. Next up, I guess we'll go with Kush Mos. Okie dokie. Uh, then we'll go with Rhett Stack. She says, uh, telling myself completions are cool. Well, I can do it. It's that simple. It took me forever to get my first couple completions, but now I'm not doing half bad. Uh, good job. Right. That's um, a confidence thing. Completions are cool. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's, there's, there's something fun about getting that platinum, even if there's no platinum associated with it. Uh, it's nice to see uh, on TA, at least, like the little highlighted color letting you know you've completed that game. As opposed to having to read the numbers. Uh, Vulgar Latin says, I would shout frantically at myself, don't. That applies to just about any situation. Uh, Freem <laughs> Hole says, Freem, don't do that. February 2014 Bean Dive. You'll never get to all those games. And most of the surfers will close before you even try. They'll also be remade in most cases. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> That's so true. Nine years from See? now, <laughs> you have only fully completed 21 of 130 games you start and eight more that, that you retire because they glitch. You're just plain suck. Also, watch out for Big L. He's trouble. Hey. Hey. Yeah, it's his answer. It's not my answer. Uh. Uh, my answer, however, is... Uh, yeah, it was it was just like I suggested. Don't bother with the cheap gamer score games. Like they're fluff. And uh who knew at the time when we were just trying to just get every scrape and scrap of gamer score that we could, uh the easy fast stuff that uh it was just not going to feel great after <laughs> and there was going to be so much of it around. You didn't really have to go doing that. Uh at least for me, that's how I feel. Uh but also um Kind of like Biff Tannen in Back to the Future. I'd like to have my my Farmer's Almanac that tells me, don't buy these games because they're going to be games with gold. Like, <laughs> I bought so many games and they became free after. And it's, it's every time. It's just like a dagger in my heart. A little, a little dagger in my heart. Let me know. Oh, crap. I could have could have not bought that. And it would be digital. Man, uh, I'd save shelf space and money and... Two things I love. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think that would be good. Uh, Shelf yeah. space and money on one hand, wife and kid on the other hand. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a space on the you shelf for the kids. You're set. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for me. That's all I was thinking. Uh, just you know, don't. Uh, I spent a lot of time early on just like slamming in gamer score, and now I'm getting close to a million, and I'm just like, yeah. I hit it when I hit it, and I, I kind of wish I had um, spent more time uh, enjoying some quality games. The 360 era was filled with, uh, as the kids say, bangers. At least I don't know if they still say that, or maybe it's just the British. Uh, there's a lot of these <laughs> bangers that um, uh, <laughs> lost their server components, and now I can't get completion in those games. Like, uh, you know, just, there's so many good little ones out there that I, I wish I had... Um, caught on to early or that I I didn't really get into achievement hunting early so I didn't know or think about the server component or the fact that oh I can beat these games with people who just stand there while I shoot them that's a great idea uh, like that didn't occur to me because <laughs> I didn't think there would be too much less 20 other people that would just stand around and let you shoot them um, 
Uh, yeah, those are things I didn't know that uh, it'd been nice if I had gotten a little heads up from myself. <laughs> All right. Well, I have follow up questions. Of course. Oh boy. So what? No, nothing bad. So was there a point that you did enjoy watching uh, your gamer score go up? Oh, absolutely. At the beginning, I, I, it was. I would look at my gamer score compared to my friends who were not achievement hunters, mm-hmm. and of course, you know, the <laughs> delta there was tremendous. <laughs> Once I started just, you know, playing these games. Um, but I, I had friends that were like, they would play a lot of like the new stuff. They'd get it from Blockbuster or whatever. And they, you know, they play the shooter and they just, they got, you know, 70% into a lot of the games that they played. So their game score was higher than mine. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, you know, I was, I was busy, um, <laughs> playing World of Warcraft and things like that that didn't have gamer score. So when that first became interesting to me. Um, I had a lot of catching up to do, um, mm. so it was so it was like get this quick stuff, yeah. All right, so you enjoyed it though; it wasn't like absolutely at the beginning. Painful. Yeah, at the beginning, it was great to watch the numbers just climb, climb, climb. But the past couple hundred thousands, I've just been like, yeah, you know, it happens. So just keep playing. I think it was not only the influx of easy games, but that that point where they decided that all Xbox One games would be worth a thousand. Mm, as opposed yeah. to the 200 pointers and the 400 pointers, as well as letting any old game come out. That's true. And those two things kind of, yeah. I tell you what was fun. What was really fun back, back in the day was when you'd get a game that would count twice. Like <laughs> you'd be like, Holy crap, that's 2000 free gamer score. Uh, or like 1000 free gamer score just by completing this game and then firing it up on the other system and just getting all those oh. auto pops. That was, those oh, were always that? great. All right, thanks for that answer, uh, Nate. I mm, want to yeah. quickly go back to Freem's answer where he had specific numbers. Uh, one thing in the community that we have a lot of is uh, spreadsheeters. And I know Freem is one of these big spreadsheeters, so I know that he can tell you he's got 21 of 130 games completed because of a spreadsheet. And he, like many, have a desk job where they spend time... Uh, working on spreadsheets and fantasizing about gaming and then getting home and passing out, <laughs> not getting to play. I think we think about playing more than we get a chance to play <laughs> sometimes. Unlike some people that could work from home and, you know, spend 50 hours on a AAA game in one week, but you know, not jealous, not jealous. No idea what you're talking about. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I spent 60. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> Uh, all right, Michelle, you're up. Okay, so going to start as well with patron responses. So X in Cyrillic says, I tell myself not to buy a handful of easy games I bought to uh, that I bought to reach the 1 million milestone. And, and let me start that again, because I can't read tonight. I tell myself not to buy a handful of easy games that I bought to use to reach 1 million and ended up not needing to play. So now I have probably 50 or 60 baby games that I paid for, but will never play. Could have saved some money. Um, yeah, I think some oh boy. some people are motivated by the climb to one. Everyone's motivated by the climb to one million differently. I think there's some people when they see that like light at the end of the tunnel, they just want to get it done and sort of like, I feel like an X will correct me uh, at some point, but I think for him, it was like he wanted to get done because that was the time at which he was going to allow himself to just play what he wanted to play. It wasn't about the gamer score anymore. It was about just going back to the games. And I think that's actually not that unusual that pe- there's so many easy games now that people will just stock up on that sort of stuff to get it done. Um, Philip Wendell says, don't start games like Infinite Undiscovery that you won't like. Get five gamer score in and stop playing permanently, impacting your completion percentage. I understand that 100%. Because I did the same thing. Um, yeah, that, that's and that's one of my, uh, it's not my full answer, but if I were to go back and tell myself multiple things, one of the things I would tell myself is, you know, be a little more discerning. Don't don't play games either because you think you like them because you like them historically. I played this game pretty much literally because it was a square game. And I was like, oh, I used to like those. No. And, you know, the other side of that being, don't keep trying to tell yourself that you might like Elder Scrolls someday. You're just not going to. Don't start them. So, but that's a a sidebar kind of thing. Jay Black adds, don't do a bean dive of any random free game you can get your hands on just to add to your bean dive stat. 
There's so many games I just dove and never went back to, and now their servers are shut down, and I can't get anything more than that one achievement. So this is similar to what Freem had said. Um, and yeah, I mean, this actually plays pretty much into what my actual answer is, is don't attach so much of your gaming to contests or events. Um, I enjoy the pursuit of gamer score. I always have. It's why I chose to buy an Xbox when I was at that point where I can get an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3. Um, but I find the times that I have least enjoyed my gaming have largely been attached to participating in various contests. Um, the contests themselves are cool and it's great and they work for other people. Uh, but between the fact that the game, these many of the contests are very hard to participate in at a high level because there are people that are very, very good at it. And the way that it makes me change my gaming, I just, you know, need to go back to tell myself and not do it. I'm one of those bean divers that also did a huge bean dive in 2012 and have never completely recovered from it. We had that, mm -hmm. um, May the 4th or not May the 4th, but like that May Star Wars gaming, um, gamer score contest, which was awesome because the community was so into it. But I think I scored 60 or 70,000 gamer score that month. And I like, I remember it vividly, but not because, oh, wow, it was so cool doing all that. It's because of how much work it made gaming feel like. And I could have either participated more casually, which I don't always have the ability to do, or I could have said, you know what, this one's not for me, but I'm going to root you guys on. And that's what I would be telling myself is don't feel the need to participate in everything. And if you do only participate until it's fun or until it stops being fun. Wow. I'm going to make Nate cry. Don't uh, cry. That was a fun contest. I enjoyed that one. That's, like, <laughs> I I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed like the team RTDL that we did once. Like I've enjoyed all of this stuff. Um, but that's, that's a on me thing. Like I can be competitive. And so I will play to the contest and not to my enjoyment. And then I'll get burned out by the fact that no matter how well I play these things, I just, I don't have the time and the mentality or whatever to be the, be really competitive at the top level. I never expect to win, but even to be like in that top 10% conversation. So then I just get frustrated. So again, either playing casually where you're just enjoying the go. And if you can't do that, just staying on the sideline and rooting other people on is totally cool too. All righty. And last but not least, Wild West, you are. Uh, all right. So we've got uh, Hurricane Dale said, stop starting those 100 to 150 hour simulation management games. They will leave Game Pass and you will hate yourself for it. Looking at you, Evil Genius 2 and Mon Mowing Sin. Ooh, those wounds are fresh. I wanted to take this one because those, those, are, those are my fun. Those are my favorite kind. But I understand it. That's a lot of time to put. I mean. If you're looking for the completion, but. I mean, you could just buy those games, so that's not the end of the world. No, and that's, yeah, that's usually what I do for the simulation games, management games, because most of them are, you know, 80 hours, 100 hours. So I like to just do them at my own pace, but I understand what he's saying, and it's a good uh, good answer. And uh, GT3 Option Fan says, find AH 101 sooner. These contests make oh. achievements hunting more enjoyable. And I would agree with him there. Aw. He's a uh, sweetheart. I would agree, and I think a lot of people would agree. It'd be fun to find it easier and or find it uh, sooner. And, but now the moment that L has all has been waiting for all day since I gave my response. <laughs> it's my <laughs> response time. Yes, I want to hear this. <laughs> so, uh, back in the days before I was achievement hunting, um, I had friends over often to play rock band Guitar Hero 3. Um, and I would go back and tell myself just to play those on a separate tag so I wouldn't have them on my tag, my main tag. Okay. Would you like to expand upon this? Well, just because, like, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm never, like, I think Matrix said, like, you're never, I'm never going to, not you, I'm never going to be, you know, good enough to do the very hard achievements that some of them require, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to get through. I can... I used to, at, the, at one point when I played quite a bit, I could do hard, fine, but, I mean, trying to master the singing, the the drums, the, the guitar, to get some of those achievements on there, like, I'm never gonna, 
never going to be good enough to get those achievements. I know my skill level. That's just not it. So right. I would just, I would just and keep it's... them on a separate tag and just enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Enjoy that. Have fun. I do that with my daughter now. My oldest will play some games that, you know, she likes to play that I don't particularly care for, but she has her own tag and we play games on them and have fun. Okay. Now, isn't there something to be said for getting only the achievements that you are able to get? Like One of my favorite things about achievements has always been that they attach to your tag. And warts and all, whatever you play is on your tag. Like This picking and choosing stuff I don't personally understand. But like If you're just going to put games in your tag you know you can complete, then that's, like, what's the point? Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know quite get this one because if you're playing uh, rock band on an old tag i don't know achievements will pop up on that old tag and be like "Eh." i think you might just not play it if if you're playing on an old you think i think you would not play it at all and you would go to a something on your tag that's what i think i don't think i would have i don't think i would have played it less i still would have played it as much as i played it and i would have enjoyed playing it and there's still some games i enjoy playing just for fun and i have a good time doing it but so before you start any game, do you just like analyze that achievement list and say, oh, can I complete this? Like, Or some other type of games where you are okay and not completing? Uh, I don't. Like, I mean, I do on some. Some of them I do. I'm not, you know, some of them I don't. Uh, I just kind of started. I didn't know. Like, I started Red Dead Redemption 2 like the day it came out. Didn't even look at the list. Just started playing it. And then when I started looking at the list and seeing some of the multiplayer stuff, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but ended up doing it uh I don't know. so sometimes i do sometimes i don't kind of i I mostly my main thing when i look at a list is just seeing if it's going to be stuff that i like to play i kind of see where the game was going to take me and see if that's something that i'm interested in or not and the genre that it's in as well and that's why i think it's fun to have like a, another like an alt tag as well where you can just kind of play whatever and not worry about that stuff kind of go back to the days when you were young and yeah playing arcade that's games that's called a that's called a switch, my friend. I have, yeah. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> Those are what you can play without worrying about. It. Speaking of which, I need to get that Advanced and Wars this. game on the Switch. They just came out with the reboot of the first two games. That was a lot of fun. I don't know if y'all have ever played those, but I played that a lot. I thought, on the, Nintendo I thought the title, I thought the title of Reboot Camp was really clever. I will say that. Yeah. Very clever. But I have never played uh, Advance Wars or any a game like that except for Final Fantasy Tactics on the Game Boy Advance. That's the only one I've played. That oh, was, I think I did that one too. Yeah. It was it was pretty good. Yeah, so for those who don't know, Wild West is a uh, crazy completionist person. Looks like you're at almost 97% completion. Yeah, I got my million with my 99, but I'm just kind of going through slow stuff on everything. I'm just kind of retired going heavy on it and just kind of play more fun games like two point campus and other stuff that I want to play more. That's Not cool. playing a lot of baby games. That was a good, uh, good question and some good answers there. All right. Anybody else uh, have anything you want to add? Good to go. Yeah, I would, I would add uh, if I could go back in time and tell you something Al, about achievements it would be stop worrying so much about why other people enjoy going for them and how they do it. Just, just as a, you know, thing to keep in mind. Wow. <laughs> I was just asking. I'm allowed to ask. I get the question. Uh, I'm allowed, to ask. <laughs> I'm allowed wrong. to ask. No, you're, you're, you're not wrong, I guess. But I, I'm allowed to ask. I like to know what makes other people tick. And I do feel that that people in the community deprive themselves of games because of the achievement lists. And you cannot disagree with that. And you know, it's true. Everything I do girl I do for food. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were going to say do it for food or do it for themselves. foof. It, one of those two I knew was going to be the answer, but <laughs> do it for food. <laughs> no. And I, I would say that yes. of myself too, is that I, I definitely am better now in the last, couple years than i was before but i used to get really wound up about like i just don't understand why people would use console commands it's not even you know you're not playing the game and it's sort of like you know what that's what brings people joy is just seeing the number tick up you know if if what makes them happy is completing games even if they're making the pool so narrow that 
they're you know cherry picking it in such a way that they can if if that's what they enjoy none of it matters the points are all made up doesn't matter just play it you enjoy we can judge i will judge those people and then i will do console commands myself Sam, I'm, right right here. People. I'm right here i'm right here oh hi nate so on brand i've done several of those <laughs> <laughs> see nate i know at least i know nate loves games this some is people you true. don't even you can't even tell if they love games they're just banging out the gamer score you can't even tell why they started gaming to begin with all right going off on a tangent here thank you for the question nate yeah. and we will go right into the showcase um i'm gonna go first and i'm just gonna talk about a mishmash of things that i've been playing lately don't really have anything new to talk about but i wanted to um bring up one more time uh her story and the reason i wanted to bring this up is I, you know i completed it before it left game pass but i wanted to say i cannot believe the the following that this game has because i had no idea so i looked on youtube and there's all these, there's a video um, with half a million views just explaining the story. And people in the comment section, uh, like, it's like the best YouTube comment section I've ever seen. People are, are you know, adults here and, and they're saying what they think happened in the game. And I thought it was really, really cool. And I'm also looking, there's another video on YouTube with 1 million views that is called, um, it's a let's play of a, an actual private investigator playing uh, the game. So I actually want to watch that. That sounds really cool. So um, shout out to her story because, you know, I did look up the uh, the list of the words, but I did watch all the videos and it was very, very interesting. So I'm excited to get to uh, Immortality, which I heard takes all of these ideas and and improves on them tenfold oh good i thought you say throws them out the window <laughs> <laughs> no i've heard nothing but good things no windows here uh, i have a couple of quick achievement related stories uh the first is a game i talked about a while back called uh slay away camp and this is a puzzle game uh where you, the objective is basically you go up down left right and you kill all the uh the people and you get to the exit and it starts off very easy and it gets very hard now there was an achievement uh for doing this mode um and there's an arrow that scrolls left and right and you have to hit a at the right moment and you have to get 25 of them in a row and michelle you'll remember this that i wound up doing this achievement but the um the achievement for getting 20 and 25 never popped mm -hmm. for me so the ones for getting 5, 10, and 13 did pop. So every now and again, I would try again, and I would get to 20, but not 25, and it didn't pop. So I'm like, all right. So what I need to do is complete all the rest and then delete my save, and then maybe it'll work. So I did finally wind up completing the game, uh, completed the story. And uh, the game, unfortunately, has some very glitchy achievements. So there's achievements for buying all the items. But what you can do, speaking of cheaty cheaters, is um, buy an item and then um, hit guide and do the whole save scum thing. You, you go to manage game and you uh, delete game from console, not from everywhere. And then it shuts the game. And then you uh, go back in and you'll have all your coins back so you don't have to grind forever and ever and ever. But if you do it too fast, the achievements don't lock. You have to hit A and then stay on that screen for a good 10 or 15 seconds before the achievement pops. So I finally did that. There was one that didn't pop for me, so I had to go and do one of the shop achievements, and then I did the 25 things again. And of course, I did it so easily the first time, and then it took me oh, uh, forever the second time. And I had one run where I got 24. I was like, oh. But of course, eventually I did do it. So that one was put to rest. And that one was also uh, made better in the uh, Friday the 13th puzzle game version. And then another quick uh, achievement story. I was playing uh, Forza Horizon 4. And there's an achievement to do the, uh, what do they call it, Michelle? Forzathon, right? Mm -hmm. Every hour, those pop up. And uh, on my RTDL, one of the achievements in my range was... 
to do three in a row. So you have to complete it, and then you have to wait another hour, complete the second one, and then wait another hour and complete a third one. And by complete, uh, there's three different rounds, and it's you and a group of randoms, basically, that are working together to complete objectives. So my first run, I did the first one, I did the second one, and then the third one, we failed. So I'm like, all right, try it again. And then the first time, uh, the first two again, I did. And then the third time, um, the force of didn't show up for me. And I was, I was like, hmm, I, I might have been like a minute late or something like that. But I think my mistake was that I idled out and I didn't go back into, um, what is it called, free roam to populate mm -hmm. uh, the session. So third time was the charm. I finally did it three times in a row got the achievement and it wound up being the achievement for my RTDL that I needed. So I was very excited about that. It's like a 3.93 ratio uh, for something that wasn't too difficult, but I'm um, not on the level of Michelle, but I've been glad to go back to uh Forza game, Forza game, Forza Horizon 4 and uh, hammer out some of those things. There are a lot of achievements in that game though. Like 166, I want to say something like that. And the three stars on the uh, on the story things are, are kind of a pain because in those modes you cannot uh, choose what cars you want to use. Where you can do that for many of the other modes, but yeah, it's been nice to uh, kind of put some time into the same games. But uh, Michelle, are you going to talk to us about Forza? No, other than just to say that uh, it's 178 achievements. So if it was 166, I'd be done with oh. it already. Um, oh, I'm how many close. do you have? Uh, Maybe that's where I got that number. 71. <laughs> so oh, getting close. Wow. Getting close. Um, I guess I nice. will say very quickly, I'm stuck on one of the stories, actually, that you mentioned. Uh, I, th I mentioned briefly last week. I'll just mention again. Keep in mind with those story chapters, the season you're playing in matters. It will make some stuff more difficult and some t stuff easier. Um, one particular uh, chapter three in British Racing Green, it it's fall right now, so it's rainy, and this car just doesn't pick up enough speed while it's rainy. It's not going to work well in winter because winter you drift everywhere, so I have to wait until it ticks back over into spring, which also might be rainy anyway. Forza, um, sometimes you're a little beholden to the to the seasons, which is part of the gimmick. Um, but yeah, I wanted actually to speak briefly about something else, so. Uh, I've mentioned on the podcast before that really my goal right now is picking away at some of these games and trying to get my completion percentage up. I'm not going to hit 97%. Respect, you're, you're a millionaire, 97%. That's amazing. Um, those are lofty, lofty numbers for me. But I'm trying to get to 80%. And I've been slowly moving toward that. So I've been more choosy and and this is a little bit to the discussion we had about what would you tell your future self and or your past self i've been more choosy about stuff i'll start because i'm trying to start things that i would only get one achievement in i want to start things that i'm going to put some time into so for example last month i played stay i didn't complete it but i think i got 16 out of the 30 achievements or something i might go back and pick away at that one so that felt fair so in looking for something new to try out so that I'm not talking about Forza again, I was just running actually through the puzzle list on True Achievements, trying to see if there was anything that struck my interest that maybe I already had access to and hadn't started or was on Game Pass. And I was really, really surprised to find out that fairly recent uh, Game Pass edition Scorn is a puzzle game. I don't know if you guys were already aware of this. I wasn't. Oh, that's it, a horror game. I yeah, see, I would not have thought puzzle. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's got puzzle elements, I would say, from what I've played so far. Right. So, and it's not even listed on TA in any way as a horror game. Not survival horror, not action horror. It's first person shooter, or uh, yeah, first person shooter and puzzle. Those are the only designations on TA, um, which was surprising. But I figured, you know what? Let me pop into this game. I generally like games with a horror theme i you know don't know if this is puzzle because like at that point like you said if it has puzzle elements or if this is puzzle because it has puzzle air quotes elements a la la noir my favorite puzzle game so i jumped mm -hmm. in uh <laughs> scorn is if you know what if achievements weren't a thing i might have put some more time into it 
I played it for about a half hour and determined in that half hour, I just wasn't feeling this one. So game starts, it's uh, graphically, it's fine. Like it's impressive, but because everything is very like gray and scary looking, it's weird to use a word like it's beautiful or whatever, because it's grotesque, but that's by design. So stuff looks good. You, you start um, right from the main menu. Once you hit start, you're, you're this guy that's just sort of crawling along and it seems like the environment is moving from sort of this, I don't know if it's like an upside down type thing or an alternate world type thing uh, between that and another world where it looks like you're just crawling toward this tower or this obelisk of some sort. And then the character falls, there's like a little earthquake, character falls through the ground, eyes shut, eyes open up, and now you're in control. So there's no setup. You're not given any kind of story. There's no voice. There's no music. It's all ambient sound. And I think, and Wild West, I mean, feel free to uh, chime in at any point because you've played more of it than I have. So maybe this stuff changes at some point. The impression I get from jumping in right away like that is it's to give you this sense of you're alone, you're somewhere, and you don't know what's going on. Which is fine. That's what I got, yeah. Yeah, like as a design element, I get it. It, it worked great for a game like Dead Space. It's not always going to work because it's, um, it's a risky motif to use. Uh, you walk into the first store you're able to walk into. Pretty early on, you find this thing, and it's like a hole about the size of someone's forearm so you do what any reasonable person stuck by yourself somebody that's really terror somewhere really terrifying would do you stick your arm in said hole and it attaches a device to you and that device allows you to interact with other elements throughout the world and by sticking your arm in other devices and this is where the puzzle mechanics come in because you'll stick your arm in there and you'll be able to highlight certain elements in the area and move them around so very early on there's a very very basic uh, door puzzle where you just have to unlock the door by hitting left hitting a hitting right hitting a door opens it's timed you have to run through and that's it i played enough to do that and then to walk around through the next big area and see the different interact points before i decided you know what i don't know that i want this game on my tag <laughs> it's only five to six hours i imagine that this is because there's a walkthrough that's fairly detailed and will give you all the answers um but I just, I wasn't feeling it. And again, as someone who likes horror games, there was sort of a, like a mixture of both trying too hard to be a horror game and a blandness because it wasn't really invoking any emotion other than, well, I'm here now. Um, I think I may go back and give it more time once I've put some other stuff to bed. It does not have a long achievement list. It's only 10 or 12 achievements. And once again, it's only five or six hours. I fully see that Scorn's going to be the kind of game once it's about to leave Game Pass that a bunch of people will try, Koosh. I don't think you will. You know, nothing personal, but it doesn't seem to be your jam. But I, I don't know. Like, I just, I was not feeling Scorn at all. And again, somebody usually likes to put on my earphones and, and turn up the volume and really get into it. I just felt like it did not, like, grab me in the least. Uh, did you have, like, a similar experience, Wild West? I imagine you made it further than I did. Yeah, not much, not much further uh, myself. Uh, I think I started it for. I was just looking at my list while you were talking. I only have three achievements in it, and I think I started it for the targets. I think was in October was the first person shooter target, and so I was kind of looking for something that wasn't going to be, you know, fully, you know, some twenty twenty five hour thing. I was looking for something kind of shorter, just to to do the targets. I enjoy the targets on TA, and I like doing them and. I think it kind of branches things out for me. So I, I put this in. I was like, okay, you know, people have been talking about it when it came out. I'll give it a shot. Didn't really, I didn't follow a guide at all. Uh, I don't know if the walkthrough was even published at that at time or not. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just went through the game and I, I felt the same way. Like it was one of those ones that it's like, yeah, I know a lot of people felt the same way. They were expecting more and got less than they thought they would from the trailers, from the atmosphere they saw. And, uh, it's probably one that I'll go, I mean, I will go back to it sometime and finish it off, but it'll be one of those ones leaving Game Pass or another TA target or event or something that'll be like, okay, I have this already on my tag. I'll just continue on some more with it. But I was a little disappointed. 
with it as it's, well. It seems like it's very completable. Uh, once again, it's 14. It, uh, like I should actually look and see what the total number of achievements is, but it's it's under 15 achievements. Um, and it's like 12. two missable achievements. But with a completion time of five, six hours, they're probably not too hard to get back to. Um, the walkthrough notes that you can do everything in one playthrough. So it's not something where you're going to have to double back in any way to do things. And just for clarity, it is a 12, uh, 12, there are 12 achievements in the list. The achievements have terrible names. They're all just 001, 002, 003. Uh, so they yeah. feel like as uninspired as the, the environments look, I guess that's the word. Like it just, it, it feels like it sort of had this template for what, a uh, horror game should look like and then did nothing with that template and even the sound design unless you turn up your sound very loud you can't hear your own footsteps so at first when I was playing it because you can hear sort of like not even like running water but sort of just just like noise like things like almost like making sound off the walls and I'm like they didn't even bother to put footstep sounds in here they did but it's just so low in the mix that it, it I don't know. There's, there's just, it, it, again, I don't want to say that it, like looks really bad or looks ugly because it doesn't, but it, it just, it just feels sort of there. I don't know how to better express that. Oh, and the one thing, one of the things that I didn't like either was just, I think you have to go through most of the level, if not the whole level to save your progress too. Because I oh. remember starting it and I got through a fairly big chunk of it and I turned it off thinking I would have a save, and I came back, and I was pretty far back, and I was not happy about that, having to redo a lot of stuff. I don't know oh, if it's no. changed now or anything like that. I haven't looked at that, but I know that yeah. the saves are pretty far, few and far between. Oh. Just keep it in quick resume. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> With all those benefits of quick resume. Well, this is... I fired this up. You're absolutely right. Uh, yeah. It is not a game for me. <laughs> I, I tried it, and uh, I could not get either, you know, just like Wild West said, there was no guide right when it first came out, uh, and I was just walking around trying to find something to interact with <laughs> and trying to get a something to happen, and uh, I was just like, you know what? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I yeah. didn't get an achievement. I spent half an hour, so whatever, just walking around. Ah, I'm good. I've had enough. And I just <laughs> yeah. it. So, yeah, no, but the not first... for me at all. <laughs> So game, points in the game that you can interact with are highlighted. There's like a white circle that will show up over them. But the first three or four that you run into do nothing, right? With The idea is supposed to be, okay, I'm stuck. I, I, again, I think I'm not in the heads of the, of the developers, but I'm stuck here. I'm by myself in this place where I don't know anything. I'm going to keep pushing forward. But I have no attachment or understanding to this person and... Like I'm, I'm with you. Like I definitely found myself saying after about a half hour of playing, I haven't popped an achievement yet, and this is a whole other discussion about achievements and how they uh, impact our gaming. I haven't popped an achievement yet. I don't think I want to. I don't think I'm invested enough in this game or interested enough to be like, let me just push a little bit forward. Like I don't feel curious about it. Uh, it was just sort of, once again, it's just sort of there. And and it's a shame because when it was first announced, again, as a, as a horror-themed sort of game, and certainly the surprise for me when I saw Puzzle was a designation, like, all right, this sounds cool, except it's not. It, it's just it's just there. Mm. If you don't like a puzzle game, there must be something wrong. Uh, to be fair, I didn't really yeah, get the, to much the of the genre. puzzles. <laughs> oh, watch it's yourself. not quite right. doesn't seem right. <laughs> Now, Michelle. No, 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 no. I like puzzle. I'm just saying that. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's, okay. it's mis it's mis genre. Well, Wild West well, could talk better to that a bunch though, because yeah, you've played more and you said it does have puzzle elements, right? So how do they come into play? Uh, the I mean, like you said, the door. I don't know if you're the door one that you're talking about. It might be different, but they had a few of them where you had to kind of move different machines around to get it in the right spot to open up a door. And then yet another one where you had to kind of do uh, one of those, I'm trying to figure out how to say it, like one of those puzzles where you have to kind of move the stuff around to drop, I think it was an egg that you had to pick up or something like, I don't know. It was just, it does have puzzle elements uh, yeah, in there. Yeah, I came across way, something so. early on where you put your fingertips into this one machine and it makes a saw lower. Yes. So 
pretty clearly yeah. there's something you have to find to get into there for the saw to cut to you somewhere else. Or there was another machine where, uh, and, and at least to the points that I've played, none of the stuff that you interact with is free moving. So it's not that you put your hand in a device and you can move this crane all over the screen. It has an upsetting and a downsetting and that's it. So the second thing I found was yeah. a crane where there was an upsetting, you could press A and it reached to the ceiling, and a down sitting where you could press A and it reached down to this chair thing, which looked like I had to find something to hook onto the chair so that this thing could lift it up and hook it into the ceiling. So I I, I can get where that is puzzly because it seems like you're going to need to find these elements to move these things around to access doors and panels and whatnot to continue to, pro to progress. Yeah, and I think after that area, there's another area where you have to, you'll get kind of like a wall and you have to kind of move uh, like a circular object around the wall while moving other little slits like left and right, up and down to kind of move it along this path. And then you get it, you put it in there. You got to do it on two sides of the wall. And then I think it drops down like a, a an object that you pick up. So there there are some kind of light puzzle elements in there, but... Whether it's considered puzzle, full puzzle or not, I don't. I haven't gotten far enough in the game to see if there's more, more of that stuff. Yeah, I just. I mean, I think you had mentioned this before already, but like, it just doesn't feel like a game like you're going to rush to go back to. Like, there's just not that intrigue yeah. about it. Once circumstance brings you back there, if it's good for an achievement contest, if it's good for a target, if it's leaving Game Pass, sure. But it's not on the merits of the game itself. You know, it'd be good for. I think it would be a real good game for us to simul, Michelle. Oh, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> no. Oh, Wild West just messaged me saying he wants to join in. All right. <laughs> Threesome. Let's do it. <laughs> anyway, that was Scorn. And uh, from quick first impressions, it wouldn't get high recommendation marks for me. Um, I don't foresee myself going back to it to try it any further. But I would love to hear if anyone has any experience with it in discord i know i've seen a few people who have completed it that are around the community if you have anything to add i would love to hear it awesome uh all right wild west did you want to talk about anything yeah yeah since the last time i was on i was able to finish up two point campus the base game achievements and i would definitely recommend for those people that like simulation management games it was a lot of fun a uh, game I wanted to talk about was a lot more lighthearted and fun and zany than Scorn, and that was uh, Destroy All Humans. Um, I saw that it was leaving mm -hmm. Game Pass, and uh, I always kind of, right now, my uh, thing, my games that I like to play are the ones that are leaving Game Pass that look interesting and just kind of more bigger games that I want to get to in my backlog. Um, and so when the list came out and that uh, came up as leaving Game Pass... I uh, kind of looked at it, and I was like, oh, that looks like fun, and uh, gave it a shot, and I know Koosh kind of talked a little bit about it when it was getting ready to leave, uh, but I I enjoyed it. It is the opposite of Scorn. It is pure, pure joy and fun, mm -hmm. and was just, uh, you know, it was. Just, I just had a lot of fun with it. It's one of those games where you can turn your brain off, and you can just go through the levels. They're only like, most of them are five minutes, maybe seven or eight minutes tops, and they're just, it was just, it was fun. Uh, you play as an alien um, who's a clone of, who's, you know, whatever number clone uh, of this uh, science guy. And you, your previous clone had crashed on Earth and gotten captured. You kind of go there to figure out what's happening. Uh, you have a couple different weapons that you'll gain throughout your the levels that you'll, that you'll do. I think there's, I'll say, 15 to 20 levels. But, I mean, like I said, they're five minutes. They're, they're very short levels overall. And... Uh, you get some different gun, guns. Uh, you get like an electric gun that you can just go around and you can upgrade them uh, in the ship, the, the different guns. And so uh, you're able to upgrade the electric one to do chain lightning. So it was just fun, like going around the map and just chain lightning all the military guys or police guys and just turning them into dust eventually after they died. Um, some levels have you flying your, sh your ship, your saucer around, and you can kind of pick up objects, throw objects. Uh, with that, you can destroy towns and stuff like that. It all was, humans. it was a yeah, yeah. Destroy all humans. <laughs> uh, it was just it was a very lighthearted game that had good humor and didn't take itself seriously, which is exactly what it needed to do. And uh, I hope that those people that wanted to play it before Game Pass 
got a chance to do it because it was a lot of fun. And if not, it goes on sale and I think it's worth 10 bucks or less. I think it's a good, you know, 15 to 20 hour completion if you're looking for all the achievements. And I had a lot of fun with it. Nice. Now, is that one a remaster of some kind? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I believe it was. I believe that the it had been come out on the Xbox, original Xbox. OG. Or something. It's yeah. It is. Uh, uh, I I don't know. I have I have I know that they're coming out with the second one that they're doing a upscale up for it. Destroy All Humans two, which I'm probably going to check out when that comes out. Well, there yeah. There's already one out. I'm pretty sure there's already a Destroy All Humans two. But yes. there's they're coming out with another <laughs> another one that is single player only. Um, yeah. For the one or something. It's, they're one of those weird. Um, yeah, that's a TH. I was just looking it up. It's a yeah. TH Nordic game, and they just like putting different stuff all over their games. I mean, it's like, but this one has blue. Um, you know, yeah. so, <laughs> they're notorious for doing that. You have like four or five editions because they're like, well, this one we just decided to put you know 4K up in there, and it's like, well, why didn't you just upscale your other game and just add an update? No, no, no. We need a whole new game. Yeah, <laughs> <so>. Reasons. <laughs> Sounds familiar. So, so if I, there's a sequel. That means they didn't uh, to do a good job of destroying all the humans the first time around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not going to spoil the ending, but yeah, oh. you, yeah. Yay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't I actually don't know how you know. I'm sure there's something going on. I think he plays from what I, I just kind of read a little bit of the other day on the TA article about the second game, and I, I think I saw that you play as the same guy uh, from the first game, but I didn't really read too much because I don't want to spoil anything, but. It was a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to the the next one, when the reprobed one. Now, I see the last achievement you got was one for challenges. Were there any challenges uh, to, to ace all the challenges? Were there any challenges in particular that stood out, or things that if somebody hasn't played it, they should be mindful of, or there's a good tip to get them through it? Yeah. So the uh, so the most of the game, most of the achievements are tied to the story, but the last like. So there's 40 achievements I'm seeing. I would say the last probably 8 to 10 have to deal with challenges. They have four different challenges. They have a racing one. Um, so your alien has a jetpack, and you can use that jetpack and running to kind of go through the challenge. Kind of go. You're just kind of chasing a, an alien device, and so you got to try to get it in a certain amount of time, which most of them are very easy to do. Uh, so that's one of the challenges. Another one, you have to use your ship and destroy a bunch of stuff in a certain amount of time. Um, so, I mean, th- they do have some challenges. None of them are particularly difficult. Some of them, I think only it took me about 20 minutes on one of them that was really hard, a race one that was very tight on its time control. But those are, I kind of just did all the story stuff first, left all the challenges for the end. But uh, they have diff- most of them are pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy to to accomplish and I would recommend doing those challenges after you're done with the game and that way you know all the controls mm-hmm. and you have upgraded equipment and all that stuff so it makes everything easier and yeah and if you do I wouldn't say they were all really easy I, I had a couple like abduction ones that were a little bit tricky like uh, I just wasn't sure what was going to give me the most score those sorts of things um, but if you do have problems you know YouTube's your friend there, there are people that have recorded their uh, successful runs of it. And it's like, Oh, I did. I had no idea that wire spools were worth so much. Uh, so you just yeah. throw those in there uh, and it really helps. But so that helped me um, with like the three or four that I thought were maybe a little bit more difficult. Yeah. There's a later one with the tank that kind of gave me trouble. And so I looked up a YouTube to see how they kind of tackled it and saw they used a different kind of weapon. So I was like, Oh, okay. That'll make it easier to do that instead of the way that I was trying to do it. You know and- what I was doing? I just picked up tanks and threw tanks at tanks, and that helped. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was like using the electric gun to kind of get them down because you had to kill them with a certain gun. So I would use the electric to get them pretty much all the way dead and almost dead, and then use the gun that they wanted that gave you the points and kill them off, and was able to combo it and get it done. But that racing one on the rooftops—I don't know if you remember that one. That was the one that gave you the most most yeah, trouble because was... you were going up and down mm-hmm. the whole time, and it was just hard to try to keep in the time frame, but. That was the tightest, you know, the tightest time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, though. It's just one that you can turn your brain off and just kind of like one of those action popcorn movie type things. You just turn your brain off, have fun with it. It's not difficult. It's a lot of fun. 
Yeah, and just zapping humans and like using yeah. the weapons. The weapons are just fun. It's kind of like Ratchet and Clank fun in terms of like, <laughs> you know, people when they get mm-hmm. shocked, they're like, ah, yeah, yeah. And that's always yeah. that's <laughs> never not funny. Yeah. Um, Especially when you get a probe gun and you just go around doing that to people. Just, just picking up senators and flinging them out, and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's just fun. Yeah. And you can Hooray disguise for yourself as humans, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What? Oh, when you read their minds, like they say some oh, pretty funny yeah. things too. Like that's right. We're talking I, about, you know, yeah, we were talking about Barks the other week, and like, yeah, they they've got some quality stuff in there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now that you say that, you know, I'm in the middle of listening to last week's episode. What you were saying about Jedi Survivor and everything that it was the same thing. Like it was just you read your mind. And <laughs> they're like talking about how they want to, you know, how they can get the attention of the local boy that they want to get, or yeah, it's just. <laughs> It's fun. It's it's irre- irre- irrelevant human uh, humor, however you say that. And irreverent? It's fun. <laughs> it's I, okay. I can't say irreverent. There you go. It's a hard it's word late. for me to say. Irrelevant <laughs> works, too. It's not addiction podcast. Just like rural. Right, exactly. I can't say exactly. rural, either. I, I just, rural, rural. Rural. Yeah, I can't That's a say tough that. one. It's a tough one. Just say unsuburban. Unsuburban. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, what else you uh, got? <laughs> um, Make myself look like a fool for everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you don't need me to make you look like a fool. <laughs> That's right. Just look uh, at this game list. Koosh. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Uh, let's start there off. There we go. That was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> let's start off with the uh, Jedi Star Wars watch. It's been 18 days. We still have not had a new Star Wars Jedi game. Uh, the watch continues until we get our third. Aww. Um, yeah. We're so I hoping, played something that's yeah, almost as good. No phantom drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as good. DreamWorks Dragons. Yeah, I can't wait. Legends of the Nine Realms. Uh, you guys, works. Yeah, if you've listened, you've, you know, you've probably caught on to the fact that I like to play the tie-ins. Uh, and this is a tie-in. I, I may a, have heard this once or twice. Yes. This is a DreamWorks series. Uh, my daughter watched like four seasons. Apparently, there's a fifth season she hasn't seen. That kind of blew her mind today. Um, that uh, and she was telling me all about it as I was playing it. Um, and you know, this is an outright games game. And if you've played outright games, you kind of know what that could mean. Uh, the quality is sometimes there and sometimes not there, or it's there in the graphics and the license. But the gameplay is kind of wanting. Uh, this game plays. Uh, you, you can you start off with one dragon. He's a thunder dragon, or his name's Thunder, and you'll eventually be able to play as four <laughs> dragons, and you can hot swap them as you're playing when you need their abilities or whatever. Um, you essentially move through uh, five realms. Uh, each realm has five levels. Every level needs to be played three times, <laughs> just about, uh, because there's a normal oh, path boy. through the level. There's an alternate path where you have to use a dragon's ability to kind of open a side, a hidden side path to get to the alternate exit. And then you have to play the level again on the challenge mode where they put in some sort of random modifier. I guess technically they're not random, but they change the game up a little bit. Like you take damage over time uh, or the enemies are a little bit tougher or all enemies start out invisible. Um, Just stuff like that. And for the most part, it's not bad. Um, the game is just, you know, you're just grinding away at it and you're just having fun, uh, just mindlessly bashing stuff and hitting X, hitting Y, occasionally swapping dragons. Uh, dragons have um, like elemental strengths and weaknesses. So you could you could switch to a dragon that's fire to kill a dragon that uh, doesn't do so well against fire. But for the most part, once you've upgraded your dragons, you can just bash them with any dragon and they do a ton of damage. Um, so yeah, I wasn't really playing it the way they wanted me to, I guess, um, to, uh, you know, optimize, you know, strengths versus weaknesses. Um, it does get a little bit hard towards the end of the game, uh, because it does expect that you've upgraded a lot. Um, I I should mention the, uh, the levels a little bit more detail. Um, they're kind of twisty and sometimes you have to unlock doors by hitting, special like crystal towers um, to unlock a little portion and then backtrack and then go through this little spot. Uh, you can run on the ground or you can fly and your flight is more like a hover. 
Um, so sometimes when you have to climb multiple levels, you just have to look for increasing heights in the level. So I have to get to this really high ledge, but that ledge is too high for me to get to. So I kind of have to hover uh, over this tiny ledge, this next ledge up, this next ledge up, and then I can get to that high ledge. Uh, and sometimes that might also require you to uh, uh, freeze certain things in the environment, like water spouts or air spouts or something, you know, or lava. You have to like uh, use ice on lava to make rock and, and then climb up that way. So it's not just straightforward running through. And every now and then there will be a battle that you have to fight. Uh, it'll, you know, the number will come up and say, oh, you have to fight seven enemies. Once you kill them, then the barriers go down. And you can continue on throughout the level. Um, one thing I saw as I was playing or as I was looking through the solutions, because there's not a whole lot written down for these. And for the most part, you don't have to worry about it because the, the achievements are, you know, finish this um, realm, finish this realm, doing all of the challenge levels, uh, get 500. Man, Outright Games love their 500 achievements. Uh, get 500 gems of this color, this color, this color, and this color. And you have to have them in your inventory. It's not cumulative. You have to actually have them at one time, 500. And then I saw a comment towards the end of the solutions that said, hey, this is kind of, you can use this as like a guide for the entire game. And I'm just going to share that wisdom because I think it's the best way if you're going to play this game. Um, and that is... When you're playing the levels, you might be tempted to think, oh, I should smash every gem cluster and get every gem I can. I should fight every dragon I see. And I should just do that because that's how games work. Well, luckily, that's not how this game has to work. <laughs> you can you can bypass every fight except for the ones where you're in barriers. You don't have to smash any gem clusters. You really don't because completing the levels three times and uh, getting the gem clusters from all the enemies you have to fight will definitely get you your 500 per color achievement. It'll also get you enough gems so that you can upgrade every dragon. And you really would just be wasting your time um, just kind of grinding on this game more than you would probably want to. Uh, so, you know, you have to be a person that, that's like me, that just likes these tie-in games and, uh, and just watching something mm. while I'm doing them or doing that while on a call at work or something like that, just something mindless to do while I'm on a call. Um, and it's not bad. Um, I, I really like DreamWorks and uh, I like their shows. Don't really watch them, but I, I like, you know, I hear them in the background. I see, you know, my daughter enjoying them and I, I like, I like all the tie-ins that they have. Uh, and this one's so not so bad. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. You wouldn't tell, uh, you know, future Koosh or, or past Koosh to uh, stop playing these bad tie-in games? <laughs> no, because I love these bad oh. tie-in games. Oh. <laughs> I love them. They, I, I just you love know. them. I wouldn't you know, say they I haven't they're, played, I haven't played, played Portal 2, but you played um, yeah. DreamWorks. Oh, okay. This, this, okay. So when you're gaming <laughs> and you have a gaming schedule and you're waiting for the next batch of games that are going to leave Game Pass or... You're between triple A's or you're between indies or, you know, the stuff you really want to play is you set aside and you just got a little bit of an opening in your schedule. Um, it's nice to just slot in one of these games. So, OK, you could slot in a rat. Eh, not my yeah. thing. So I'm just uh. going to slot in like this <laughs> other thing that's uh, equivalent to a rat for me. Um, a game that may not appeal to other people, but for me, because of, you know, whatever damage I had in my Reasons. childhood, I love yes. tie-ins. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. So, so that's what I choose to do. Have mm -hmm. you played Aragon? Have I played Aragon? No, but I own it because it's tie-in. Oh. <laughs> and I will eventually get oh. around to it. Man, I remember um, Aragon. No, I want you to, to, to play, to complete this. Did okay. Complete this yet? I want you to uh, play Aragon and, and tell us. Oh. No, don't, don't do it. it. Don't. Yes. Don't, don't, don't do it. it. No, listen. No. Get, get your daughter to play Aragon with oh, you. It's don't. a great co-op adventure. Don't do it. She'll no. love it. She'll love it. Hmm. And then you can get the uh, pal back. <laughs> this is totally the <laughs> angel jaunt. and the devil on your shoulder thing. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> don't do it. Listen, if you bought it, oh, I've I hear got a lot it. of people buying games and not playing them. Mm. I don't like that. You paid money, buy it, and, like play the stuff you bought. No alts. You play it on your 
your tag. I love those 360 games, it. even though you know the quality's not there anymore and all that stuff. I, there's just something about that era of of game that it's just kind of like, especially when it's a tie-in. You, you, that was you'll like appreciate the high, the high DreamWorks Dragons a lot more. Well, okay, yeah. You tell me you didn't pay fifty dollars for this game. I have of to course ask not. I, oh, yeah, that was the other thing I was oh. going to mention. Yeah, don't pay money for this game. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> any money for this game now just steal it i'm not going to tell you uh, i'm not going to bring a game that i think is complete garbage uh, i had huh. fun with this but um you know don't pay 40 or 50 dollars for there you this. Go. There's, there's no world in which i would ever say do that uh <laughs> there's no world in which i would ever say do that uh if you find yourself at a library if you find yourself at a yard oh, sale perfect yeah if you find yourself trapped in someone else's house and they're not around, and you can log in on your gamer tag. Just, Go ahead and just, do it, because uh, it's not bad. <laughs> but yeah, don't pay money for this. <laughs> it looks like the lowest price it's been digitally is twenty. So it's not even worth that. No, I would no. It's not worth twenty. Most of these, uh, unless you're like a super fan or a kid that doesn't know any better, um, you you know these these outright games are just uh, they're not great uh, for the most they're part. They're outright they're, bad. There's one or two that are okay. Like the last kids in the universe, I think was, that was, that was a good game. That was decent. Um, and there's some really value games there. They came out with, Oh yeah. But the, the Paw Patrol mm-hmm. stuff, that's not good. And, and this game, <laughs> once this game is done, you're not really going to want to play it again. Uh, I don't think, but <laughs> like I said, if you've, if you've got that gene, like I have that gene where I just love tie in games and they don't have to be good. This is like, you know, you're reading your, uh, your trash novels. That is this uh, for me. And it's not a bad game. I, I've had a good time just kind of button mashing uh, while doing other things. You know, I'm not really paying attention to the story. My daughter was just like, why are they doing this? And I was like, I don't know. And she goes, I, I know this area. She's like, but um, I don't know why they're, and I was like, yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just, I'm killing dragons. And that's, that's good enough for me. Oh, Look, man, not every week's going to be Jedi Survivor. I wish it was. I was, was. just going to ask. <laughs> so which one would you prefer? <laughs> well, OK, uh, here's the thing. Uh, I would love okay. to talk Jedi Survivor again because uh, I got everything since the last time we talked. I, I have the you thousand. You completed it now, right? Yeah, I have the full completion. I know you don't like to mention these things yourself, but I like them. Yeah, so I got the full it. completion. I have almost good, everything good. you can do in the game I've done. Uh, you know, the stuff that you don't need for achievements, but yet it's still there to do. I should, you know, I should talk about it a tiny bit just to let you you know that when the story is over, when the story is over, when the credits are over, the story is not over. Respawn just, they, they, they've really just knocked it out of the park, man. Um, The story continues after the game is over while you're going to do cleanup. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, a completionist, you want to get all the achievements, you want to get all the stuff. If you like the story, it's still there. You're finding out more stuff. You're finding out backstory. You're finding out motivations for certain characters to do certain things. There's uh, foreshadowing possibly for the next game is going on. And there's just, you know, there's in deep lore that, okay, you didn't find that thing, but yeah, you're now you're going to learn more about it. But the fact that the story continues after the credits just blew me away and um and there's surprises and it's just a fantastic game uh you know the triple a scope is pretty cool <laughs> i don't play a lot of triple a's uh, especially brand new triple a's uh and but this one is just special uh and and yeah i, I just i <clears throat> i really wanted to mention that the story continues and it's substantial it's not it's not just drips and drabs like they give you a lot of stuff that happens after the game's over. Uh, so, so uh, keep that in mind when you're playing, you're not quite done. Uh, you're going to, you're going to want to do a little bit of cleanup if you're in, invested in the story, because there's going to be more story for you. All right. But that was dragons. Well, that was legend of the night. Oh, that, was, that was the dragons. <laughs> yeah. This just opens up another rabbit hole. Cause then I'll want to watch the, uh, the source material and play the game. I watched I watched one episode with Nora today, and um, it was okay. Yeah, one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, she watched another one, but like um, one season. You mean? <laughs> no, they're like half an hour. So uh, we ha- I had it going on while I was working. I was just kind of peeking over, and she would she would pause it and show me the important scenes. Uh, so <laughs> the important scenes. Yeah. 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 Episodes yeah. turns into two hours. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where do baby dragons come from? <laughs> Back it up. You're like, oh, did you see that lightning? There was lightning in the cloud down there. That's thunder. Uh, thunder of the dragon. I was like, oh, okay. So <laughs> I, I'm, so, I'm just blown away by how much she picked up. I just thought she was a zombie when she was watching these shows, but she apparently. Oh, no. They are sponges. They are sponges. Yeah, they are sponges. yeah my daughter right. frequently quotes Bluey all the time. That's four years old. So I know that and that's awesome. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought Honestly. that was your. We need that Bluey game. Year old. We need the Bluey game. I would play that. Nope, no, no teens heartbeat. in my family yet. I age them every time you come on. I pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> That's my thing. My 11 year old's like 15 now to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Still, do you, watch, still watching Bluey. Do you feel like a horrible parent every time you watch Bluey because of how good they are? <laughs> 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 and like their parenting stuff. Does that ever just make you feel like a horrible parent? No, but she's watching Bluey in the other room. So while my wife and I are usually doing stuff around the house. So, okay, but, I, I love that oh, show. So you're but ignoring her, yeah, oh, yeah just ignoring her. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Much better. Those parents just have more Are time than about, anyone in the world. Uh, getting achievements on the day that your wife gave birth. Yeah, that was my achievement. I was just doing that to get her out of the house and into the hospital <laughs> so I could play games. That's that's, what that, that's just add that to eat spicy what. food and take walks. Get achievements yes. so your wife gets angry at you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, sales <laughs> worst sale way ever. Um, Nate, I heard right. you had some tabs open. Uh, I do have some tabs open. Um, for research purposes. Uh, oh, Zombie by the Land. way, real quick. Yeah. yeah, sorry to cut you off. I was thinking of an amazing idea for a licensed game that somehow they did not do, mm -hmm. which somebody just doesn't like money. Mm -hmm. So they need a tie-in of the Angry Birds movie. But the Angry Birds movie game, you see, so it's the movie based off mm -hmm. the game. But you, um, mm -hmm. never mind. <laughs> no, I, I would play that. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Um, they came out with that Street Fighter Two movie with Raul Julia, but then they made a crappy game based off of it. It would be kind of like that. It, it honestly has always kind of bugged me that they keep putting out new Angry Birds games, but they don't have achievements, and like they're not putting them on consoles. <laughs> like that would be a that'd be a fun game. Of all the phone games that get ported Those. to the consoles. They wouldn't port a quality one like uh, like Angry Birds. I don't get it. Also, Plants vs. Zombies 2 never came out. For mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but it did. No, not that one. The real oh. Plants vs. Zombies 2. Oh, yes. <laughs> that one. That one I would want. <laughs> so tabs. Stop trying to, stop trying to uh, incite me. Okay, let go me ahead. Talk, <laughs> let me talk about my tabs. Let me talk about my tabs. Oh. Uh, we've got Zombieland, <laughs> Double Tap, Road Trip. Four dollars down from forty. Huge. Wow. Whoa. Um, yeah, this is a shoot 'em up. It's a twin stick shooter, and I completed this on a free play weekend. So uh, it took me some time. I, I don't remember how much time. Let me see. So this is based on the movie. TA tracks it. Um, it. Took me seven hours and ten minutes. That's about right for the price. Uh, it was you know it was a fine shoot 'em up, fine twin stick shooter. Uh, I would not pay forty dollars for it. I'm pretty sure I talked about this at some point. Too, really. But yeah, but it was it was for four bucks. That's a good time. Um, the top review says the best worst game I have played this year. Huh? Well, <laughs> that's, I, look at that. It's also a tie-in, isn't it? Hmm. I was just gonna say, yeah. <laughs> this Harrelson? might, yeah. This might be my uh, my glasses. Favorite game ever. This might be my glasses <laughs> that are. Uh... <laughs> but four dollars. Come on, come on. It's got to be horrible for that to be a bad deal. Uh, next up, Azure Suit Striker, Blaster Master Zero. And Gunvolt Chronicles. These are like trilogies each, Whoa. I believe. Uh, each one of those games is on sale to a degree, I think 50% for most of them. Uh, Azure Suit Striker has a more recent game. If you like Retro, if you like Mega Man, these are all, they all kind of have some sort of Mega Man or Retro DNA to them. Uh, and, and yeah, if that's, your, if that's your jam, you might want to check them out. It's a good price. Uh, next up, El Ijo, A Wild West yes. Tale. Oh. Eight dollars down from twenty. Who is this Eho? Um, stealth. Uh, <laughs> it's me. I've been looking at this game for years. I love the art style. I'm not a huge stealth fan. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna talk about this in a week or two. Uh, I've, I've just been looking at this game forever, and oh. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna pull the trigger. It's happening. Uh, so I will be talking about this soon. Uh, it's a cool looking game. I love the art style. 
and uh, it looks like you're mostly just kind of sneaking around town and seeing what people are doing. Uh, and uh, we'll find out if that's true or not. Uh, and <laughs> finally, panda tea? Pan, pan, panda? Panda? Panda tea. It's got to be panda Dragon. tea, right? $3.50 down from five. This is a platformer. There's only 10 levels. Uh, they get an achievement for beating each level. So maybe there's more. I don't know. But you're playing as a panda. And um, breaking news, X the Hero has not played this yet. What? What? Yeah. So no at some way. point, he, hopefully he'll hear this and find out that this game exists. Uh, and uh, and there you go. Uh I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying you should play it. I'm just saying this thing exists. <laughs> that was excellent. Nah, Michelle, work. you have any games to recommend? I have one yeah, game to uh, recommend, which I've recommended before, but I uh, feel like I'm hearing the game come up in conversation a lot now. So just want to point out that Round Guard is once again on sale for ten dollars down from its normal twenty. It is a roguelite puzzle game according to true achievements. Uh so I guess it is most properly described as a roguelite peggle. The game plays exactly like Peggle. As you go through, you earn certain relics that you can activate on future playthroughs, some which make the game a little harder, some make it easier. But in addition to all that base stuff, which is done quite well, they've released four uh, expansions for it. They're not paid for. They're just baked into the game. And they've introduced new characters, classes that have different skills and, and spells that they use. So you're really getting just at twenty dollars the game is worth it at ten it's a no brainer definitely recommend round card very nice uh wild west did you come up with anything uh i did um i have been banned uh banned from recommending control or <laughs> uh the other whatever the other one shadow of war even though they're on sale um so i'm gonna go with metro exodus the metro redux bundle excuse me. That is five ninety nine down from twenty nine ninety nine. I love the Metro games. I think they're great games. They're very on point. They don't overstay their welcome. They're just great games. They've all been redone with better, uh, better, uh, less glitches, better patching, better gr- uh, graphics, visuals, all that stuff. So there's three of them out there. They're all great games. I'll recommend all of them. But this one, you get the first two games that have been redone for the Series X, I believe. And uh, just great games. And uh, so, yeah, I'll do that. But if you feel so inclined, Control Ultimate Edition, you get a bunch of games. It's nine ninety nine. <laughs> it's all good. And, and it's not <laughs> it's a great game. Someone got it I've for free. Played. Someone got it for free. So It's true. Whoever that was. If you game so good, I won't play it because I'm saving it. <laughs> To Although, bolt, delete, stop talking about control. There are, there are some other free oh. games out there whenever Koosh decides to, to give them away. Oops. <laughs> yeah, there are, aren't there? Oops. Uh, maybe we'll do that after the show. Oh. Ooh. Intrigue. Uh-huh. Mm, maybe I should do one at the end um, of the show. I think you should. Ooh, what are we doing? We'll, we'll revisit that at the end of the yeah. show. We're giving away something? And yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, I'd like to recommend some games. It looks like they brought back the Easy Gamer Score uh, mm-hmm. thing on TA, the article. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, 56 completions from the Xbox sale. Wow. Uh, so as it turns out, the game I talked about last week, Discolored, is on sale for 549 Much better. And uh, once again, if you need this for the targets for hitting those uh, colors, you could... Uh, do much worse than discolored. And my favorite Rattle Like games are back on sale. I haven't talked about these in a long time. Uh, Devious Dungeon 1 and 2. There's actually meat on the bones for these games. They're uh, three and four hour, three to four hours and six to eight hours respectively. They are dungeon crawling roguelites that just are just fun to play. And they're uh, uh, what do you call it? Procedurally generated levels and great music. Just just a good time. And there's another one of these outright games, Nate, that I would love to buy, but it's still a tad too pricey. It is the Adams Family Mansion Mayhem. I know, right? It yeah, I've is, been watching it. Ugh. It's sixteen dollars <laughs> down from forty. It seems fair, honestly, but I feel like this is a game that, much like uh, Garfield Lasagna Party, 
would be played, get the completion, and then kind of forgotten about. I think you're but probably I right. I love the Adams Family franchise. And it's a uh, you know, local party game, so it sounds fun. But uh, $16, I'm just a cheapskate. But I don't know how much lower it could really go. All right, that was sales. Uh, it is now the uh, second half of the month of May. So we have a new Games with Gold. Hoa! Hoa! That was uh, Devil's Advocate, was that? We'll say yes. 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 Someone knows what I'm talking about. No, it wasn't. It was uh, Scent of a Woman. That's what it was. Why are you <laughs> bringing it? Yeah, I thought, I thought that was your Pacino. Yeah. Yeah, it was my Pacino. Scent of a Woman. I don't know. Um, <laughs> that is uh, Games of Gold. It's a two to three hour adventure. So I think this one might actually get some play. Mm-hmm. Just want to state what we're talking about, about it now. It. It's currently tracked at 1,113 tracked gamers. I wonder once it's out there in the you can download it for free space and it's a quick completion, all that. I wonder how much that number is gonna gonna jump in the near future. Well, it's funny you should say that because uh, Star Wars Episode One Racer, the TA jumped up significantly. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's at 1,900 TA now, and it's an wow. easy completion. That tells you. Mm-hmm. that it jumped up a lot. So keep playing that one, people. That one is available until the end of May. Um, And we actually got some Game Pass news. We were not podcasted. Yay. I will go through these fairly quickly. Out now is FIFA 23. And we had... um. I think we had a hacker who's just putting random words on the uh, on the show <laughs> notes. But I'll read exactly what it says. Fourth. Fourth. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's hard for me to... Now I'm having trouble saying easy words like fourth. Fourth, fourth yeah, ball. Fourth, <laughs> fourth ball. <laughs> um, this game, uh, if you start now, uh, you might be finished by next year. It is uh, 80 to 100 hours or 150 to 200 hours, depending on who you ask. I think Nate likes to lie. But uh, if you're a soccer ball fan, you definitely already know about the FIFAs. Eastern Exorcist, which is a side, comma, scrolling, (laughs) side scrolling, action, role playing, uh, first person, puzzling, vehicular combat, drama. Bullfighting, yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, it is all like in none of these things. Six to 12 hour game. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> that comes out on uh, today, May 18th. And then we have Ghost Lore, an action RPG. Also comes out today, May 18th. Um, next game, I think. Uh, Squee! To. Uh, uh, I'm going to bring back some rocker dude and, and think this next game is going to jingle Nate's jollies. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's very excited about <laughs> Planet oh, yes. of Lana. Planet, Planet of Lana is a uh, action adventure limbo like that some on this uh, podcast uh, have already dubbed this a top 10 game of the year. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, much like Benedict Fox. <laughs> oh, too soon. Uh, that comes out May 23rd. And then we have Cassette Beasts, May 25th, which is already on PC, but that's coming to console, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then we have Massive Chalice, which is a 60 to 80 hour strategy turn based. So I guess Wild West would like this game and nobody else in their right mind. <laughs> As well as Railway Empire 2. Because I guess after Railway Empire 1, people were begging for a sequel. That is on my list. I want to do Railway See? Empire 1. I haven't done it yet, but I'm excited that they're getting What is two. that? What do you, build train tracks and go choo-choo? What is that? That's that's what I've seen. I watched, I've watched. i just watched a oh. few videos on it. And yeah, you just kind of build trains. <laughs> and the old western timey trains is what I've seen so far. But so. if you play tracks, that you're good enough. You're, you're good to go. 
right? I mean, come on. Basically the same thing. Yep. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Or if you've played uh, Crimson Dragon, right? It's the same thing because that game is. You got it on rails. Come on. Oh uh, my Stick with goodness. Me. Uh. Stick with me. <laughs> My goodness, indeed. Uh, next up is Chicory, a colorful tale. Ooh. An adventure indie RPG. This sounds cool. It's very cool. Uh, it's cool. been out on other platforms, and we're finally getting it. I'm very excited to check this out. This is, uh, I'm going to have to look at some screenshots of this. This sounds like a neat game already. May 30th. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that'll be out just in time for Memorial Day. And now, sadly, we have the leaving game pass. Uh, Wild West, I'm going to make you read this because I'm I'm talking too much. Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, Europa Universalis, whatever that is, is has nine (laughs) unobtainables. Is that why you want me to read it? It's because you're trying to make fun of me? I'm just saying some hard stuff. Well, I'm going to go right through it. No, I would never make fun of you for that. That, If it has nine unobtainables, don't play it. I, I, no. Play it Uh, on an alt. It's just like I always say, play it on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've got <laughs> Evil Genius 2 World Domination for cloud console and PC. Management game, Sequels one that I'm going to buy. I've heard of. <laughs> yeah. I think the first one's only on Steam, if I remember right. Because I looked into playing this at one time, and I believe it's... I believe, so I, I might be mistaken. But that's a management game, 120 to 150 hours. So it might be worth your while, like me, to buy your buy it and just play it when you want. Uh, you got FIFA 21 console and PC for EA on EA Play, and I'm seeing that. Just say no is what it is. Not just do it. Just just say no. Because Nate's editorializing <laughs> on the show. Notes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got floppy nights. On, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got floppy nights co- cloud console and PC. It's a strategy turn base. Twenty to twenty five hours. Uh, I saw that. Uh, I think Rocker did said he was wanted to go finish it today in Discord. I think uh, there was then, also some. There's also uh, just to jump in real quick. There's also oh, a yeah, recommendation that if you got short on time, you could kind of bump the settings around and make it a little bit easier. Yes, but it would kind yes. of ruin the fun as it does. Uh, but yeah, if you get kind of close to the line, maybe check that out. Yes, you're right. I remember seeing that as well. And then everyone's favorite game of a game. Uh, lawn, lawn, lawn mowing simulator, cloud console and PC simulation <laughs> oh, boy. game, sixty-five to eighty-seven hours. Just get all that lawn mowing in, and if you do that, you won't get bit by spiders like me, and not get powers and be frustrated that you're not <laughs> Spider-Man. I feel like this is a, a good I mean... leaving announcement for people <laughs> who want a month off from trying to chase stuff that's leaving. Like, there's none of that. Here's a little mm. 10 to 12 hour game. I'll just try because it's there. Like the the closest one is Floppy Nights. I mean, Hurricane Dale will uh, beg to differ. He's, he's going to be chasing this lawn mowing simulator game. It sounds like. He's, if he tried to go for it, he's got a long, long two weeks. <laughs> yeah. If he's trying to do Evil <laughs> evil 2 and Lawn Mower. That's, that's insane. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't know. You'd have to play four or five hours easily a day just to try to finish. If you wanted to complete it, both of those. I mean, that's just... That's why I said nah. just buy them. Just I'm, buy I'm them. probably going to try Floppy Nights, and I, I'm thinking about loading up Lawn Mowing Sim on an alt and mowing a lawn and seeing if I like it. I seem to remember Rocker saying something about like having to set up work schedules and and pay employees, and that's not my I jam. I remember, no, he he fired employees. That's he what fired employees. Was. I yeah. remember that, yes. Yeah. Habib or something like that. He, he let them go. It was yeah. a tough day for him and his family. <laughs> But if that's, it was just mowing lawns, I'd be tempted. But if you have to do timesheets and stuff like that, and uh, you know, <laughs> TPS reports, I'm not, I'm not down yeah, with that. Yeah, like a budget. <laughs> sure. But thank you for letting us know, uh, Nate, on the sheet that a lawn mowing simulator is a simulation game. I always <laughs> no problem. I, you know, I do the research. This is a research podcast. I appreciate your candor. <laughs> just in case you saw lawnmower and didn't see the last part, it's there for you twice. <laughs> <laughs> and he also wrote classic. Always needs to be said. Okay. Are we going to Braggalicious Brag Camp? Think so. Oh, wait, I'm the host. We're going to Brag Camp. Mm-hmm. Michelle, you're up first. Sure am. Let's go dole out some congratulations for some completion milestones. 
First up, we have Wildwood Mike at 200 completed games. Domain has reached 700 completed games. NBA Kirkland at 850 completed games. Mighty Mango with 1,150 completed games. Waka Pale is 1,200 completed games. And Magic Monkey with 1,800 completed games. Congratulations, everyone. In Whoa. the streaks. Day in the Whale is currently on 50 day, as is Oz Buffanatic. Uh, Koosh Moose with 200. Uh, Cerebral Assassin Slacker. 200. Uh, I'm not really trying. It's just uh, it's just been a good 200 streak. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what it is. <laughs> Alicia, uh, 750. Uh, uh, Dynaman 87, 900. Eldritch SS with 1,000 days. Sincere Seeker 6 with 1,150 days. And celebrating their three-year achievement win streak is Philip Wendell. In gamer score, we've got Half a Phobic with 200,000 gamer score. Jay Huns with 300,000 gamer score. NBA Kirkland is getting ever close to that million with 900,000 gamer score. Shadow as well is at 950,000 gamer score. Domain is at 1.2 million gamer score. And Mad Eye Pad Eye is at 1.5 million gamer score. Very nice, people. In leaderboards, Ace is in the top 1,000 of the TA leaderboard for Vayners. Aftos, 84, is number. One in Australia, TA leaderboard for vehicular combat. Very nice. Very nice. Alicia, now in the top 20 of the England Gamer Square leaderboard for Windows. Bastion Reader, second in USA completed games leaderboard for Shoot 'em Ups. Oh, excuse me, he's now number one in the USA. Very interesting. As we're recording this, we just definitely just did it right now. Number one, shooting things. I'd love to hear some of these people. Come to the Discord, Bastion. And Aftos, talk to us. Talk to us. Chesno is in the top 50 of the England Gamer Score leaderboard for Windows Fighting. Hmm. Well, Lucas1987 <laughs> is now in the top 5 of the TA leaderboard for Action. Luke17000 is now in the top 5,000 of the TA Difference leaderboard for Survival. And yes, the difference would be 12,000. Raw Sauce Ross is now in the top 500 of the TA leaderboard for arcade racing. Skadovac is now in the top 10 of the Pennsylvania Achievements 1 leaderboard for management. And Sir Polygon is number one in the USA TA leaderboard for bowl sports games and number two in all of Xbox. Very nice. Um, in Bragalicious Brag Camp. I did get tagged by a couple of people. Uh, Mental Knight says, I'm almost number 100 in sports TA score, and I'm almost number 100 in basketball TA score. Well, thank you, Mental. That was definitely uh, bragworthy. And Jay Blach says, Are you jealous I don't have to do any more Minecraft dungeons? Well, kind of, yeah. I know that Jable's completed. I know that... um, Crew completed it. The other people too. Kronos. Kronos. And Rocker Dude. Thanks to Kush's exploits. Wow, I just <laughs> pointed them out. They were already there. No, no. You helped the community and you deserve your just desserts. Mm. Back to creme brulee. <laughs> mm. It all circles back. Um... I want to give another shout out to Hawkeye I won Hades Barry, who um, decided to answer the question of the week uh, hours late at the buzzer. I'm going to read it just because I'm a nice guy. He says, don't buy easy games for score. You don't enjoy them and you don't care about score. Whoa. And playing multiplayer games with other people won't always be awful. It can actually be fun if you find a good group. I'm surprised nice. that didn't, didn't come up more often. Um, and I know playing with uh, me is always fun. I definitely uh, have played some games with Hawkeye here and there. And I would love to play with more of the community. I feel like we haven't done that in quite a while. I have like uh, an Among Us night or Fall Guys. Fallout, I almost said Fallout Boy. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> something like that. That does remind me... Uh... 
They oh, yeah, recently yeah. they recently added the Fall Guys the ability to do custom maps, so people are building their own maps, and apparently you can get achievements tied to them, uh, so they're, you're not sh- locked out from getting achievements. So any first place finishes, oh. any qualifications, uh, any oh, nice. five in a row that that all still counts. And apparently, yeah, apparently it's you know I, I don't know for a fact that uh, things are set up right now to make it super easy but I, I've seen I've seen some rumblings of hey this might be you know something that you could uh, manufacture or make a little bit easier I should say well thank you for the tip yeah so I'm actually going to try the 21st place finishes uh, I think <laughs> Mr. Exploit yeah Schmoose. see what we can find I don't know why anyone would want to finish in 21st place but uh, I will let you um, go for it Oh my goodness. Uh, I kill me. Uh, <laughs> well, that was a really fun show. That's all because Wild West was here. Full of excitement and creme brulee. Mm-hmm. Well, whenever I get to yell at him, it's always a good time. It's the only reason why you invite me on the show is just to make fun of me. <laughs> I would like to all the mock time. you, judge you, <laughs> ask about your 10 teenage daughters. And that's the other number that keeps growing every single time. Yeah. Somehow I have more kids every time I'm on the show, too. Well, I mean, that's how time works. Uh, you need to tell us how Red Dead Redemption 4 was. Yeah, let me uh, let me go about what? Let's see, it's Rockstar, so I'll see you about 40 years in the future, and then we'll come Probably. back. Yes. Sounds good. Well, thank you for joining us on such short notice. I believe... And he's still watching the credits uh, for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. <laughs> I'm still sitting in the theater editing this. You know the rule when it comes to Marvel movies. You do not ever leave the theater. You never know if there's going to be another scene. Um. <laughs> we'll get his hot take on that one next week. <laughs> I can't oh, wait. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Ooh. Yeah, great. Can't wait to hear what he has to say. <laughs> Where Whatever ranks. he says, just assume it's the opposite. <laughs> He'll come back. He'd be like, I was actually all wrong about Thor Ragnarok. I actually guard. <laughs> no, I thought I thought Guardians 3 was pretty good. It was a good ending. Ah, can't wait was, to see it. Was Thor in it? Was no, Ragnarok Thor was not in it. it. Ragnarok was not in it. How about... Ruth? Were there any goats bleeding? <laughs> there was no goats bleeding, thankfully. Oh, uh, okay. Did anyone go through any waterfalls? There are cute animals. Uh, no, no waterfalls. There was a Marvel movie that I just watched where someone went through a waterfall, and I thought of Nate and I told him. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you which movie, but uh, <laughs> if you can figure it out, let me know. Someone went through a waterfall and found something. So, I know. Anyway, I know you, you know. Black told Panther you. or something. Unbelievable. I would never spoil anything like that. So, Shang Chi. So, um, <laughs> thank you for joining us. For episode 251, I am Big Al, and class is dismissed. Good night. Good night. Welcome back to yet another NeverEnding Stories. We are on quite a roll now, as more and more patrons and staff member complete more of their long, unfinished stories and campaigns. Joining me once again, after two successful campaigns completed, is Mr. GT3 Option Fan. Hello. How are you doing? Doing good. How are you doing? I am doing well. I'm doing especially well because you are smashing your way through these old completions. I've really enjoyed uh, having the incentive to go back and finish things that I might not otherwise have the the full completion in, but it gives me that incentive to go back and clean up those stories, you know. Well, last time you were here, we talked about uh, two old classic uh, Xbox Live Arcade titles prince of persia and explosion man and today we're here 
to talk about two old classic <laughs> Xbox Live Arcade <laughs> titles. It's funny how that happens, you know, in, in 2010. <laughs> That's what the, uh, the games were. Uh, I find is there's a similar issue that I kind of ran into with these old Xbox Live Arcade classics that I would hit a wall and uh, just put them down for 10 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, okay. So let's start. I'm, I'm going to choose how we start this time because um, I'm going to start by asking you about the game I know the least about which is Greed Core or Greed Corp. Mm-hmm. Core? Corp. Corp? Mm, core? Core. Greed Core. That sounds right. What is Greed Core? So Greed Core is a strategy game. Um, it's kind of the entire grid is made up of uh, hexagons and you have one to three opponents in a particular match. And your goal is to be the last person standing by essentially every turn you can use what's called harvesters and harvesters uh, give you money. But what they also do is they bring the, the tile down for the tile it's on plus every tile that's adjacent to it. So all the while uh, across uh, a match, the uh, the level's slowly crumbling away until there's little tiny islands of uh, you and your opponent. And uh, you have to either figure out how to fly one of your people over to your opponent's island. You plan a harvester there and kind of start to sink your opponent's island. But you have to protect your own and you have to be strategic about it. So yeah, that's kind of the premise of it. And the campaign was... 24 levels of that were kind of started out at an easier difficulty and uh, every six levels it kind of ramped up in difficulty and uh, changed. Uh, you're, sometimes you were playing against one opponent, sometimes you were playing against three opponents and kind of the landscape of the map changed from level to level. Mm. And from what I could tell, so it's, it's presented in a kind of isometric hexagonal kind of map grid is that right right yeah from what i can tell okay so turn-based strategy not my thing normally is it normally your kind of thing your kind of deal um you know i really did enjoy it when i got into it it was a little hard to pick up at first which is why i (laughs) did the first level and i'm like i don't really understand this and Mm. i put it down (laughs) yes so the game released back in february 2010 you played it first, or at least you got the first achievement in December of that year. Right. And as as kind of I mentioned, alluded to before, Xbox Live Arcade games don't really give you a sense of how much progress anyone has made in a game. Right. The the, the single achievement you got back in 2010 was, was just kind of a random one for causing a chain reaction mm-hmm. um, in a move. So, I, I mean, did, did you... Like you, you kind of hinting there that you played one level. Is that it? It, it yeah. It was the the first level. Maybe got to the second level, um, mm. and yeah, that that was it back that then. Was it. Wow. Fast forward thirteen years later, and you powered your way through to victory and got the final uh, campaign achievement, global warfare, for traveling the world and conquering all of your enemies. <laughs> uh so what 24 levels how long how long does that take roughly? Mm, yeah so i was tracking my time on this um the first three quarters of it took about 10 and a half hours and the last the last quarter i probably finished that up in about uh three hours so yeah probably mm. about 13 14 hours total Okay, so not not a, I mean, I guess standard kind of for a smaller Xbox Live Arcade game of the time. It is now completely delisted, mm-hmm. and it is not backwards compatible. So I'm guessing for most people, this is not a game that they're going to be finding or picking up or even right. potentially going back to. Um, would if it was more available, would you recommend it? I think so. Um, I think it's one of those games that you kind of have to. You have to get it, you know, you have to understand a little bit of the mechanics, the strategy behind it. Um, and once that kind of kind of have some of those aha moments, 
you're not just trying to, you know, <laughs> brute force or watch some sort of, you know, random YouTube video out there to try to figure out the level. You know, once once it made sense, it was a lot more enjoyable. Is there much of a story attached to the game, the kind of campaign mode? Do they do they make much of a deal of that, or is it pretty much just an excuse for classic turn-based action? Yeah, there's minimal story. It's essentially tech slides um, between each level. Um, there's four factions in the game, and I can't remember all of them. There's like the Freemen, the Pirates, uh, the Empire... And you play through each one of those factions over the course of the uh, the campaign, um, and there is some story to it, but it's one of those things you you skip over the first couple of paragraphs to just start playing the level. Okay, and so you're now left having completed the campaign with four four whole achievements for sixty gamer score. Congratulations! Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, although uh, being an Xbox Live Arcade title, that is out of only. 12 for 200 so you know actually you know you've done a decent proportion (laughs) right um what you're left with is confusing to me because by the descriptions it just seems like miscellaneous kind of stuff but the achievement flags all have difficulty specific flags on them right so could you enlighten me about that? Sure. So all of those are... Um, so when you go through the campaign, as you beat a certain level, you'll unlock that map to play in the free play mode. And so in the free play mode, you can select a difficulty that you want to do. So a lot of the free play kind of achievements are for playing on skilled or expert uh, difficulty. So... Mostly it's just to go back and get these miscellaneous kind of cleanup uh, achievements, which, you know, after going through the campaign, it it's, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Do, do you think you will? Do you have any intention to, or do you think you're yeah. pretty much done with it now? I think I def- definitely will. The only one mm-hmm. that looks like it'll take a little bit of getting somebody's help with is actually earn uh, nine titles. Um, it's the one called uh, Moving Through the Ranks. And you get eight titles by going through the campaign. And you can get a ninth title in the campaign by finishing all of the uh, hardest difficulty missions without losing. Um, but I did not realize that until after I'd already finished the campaign. And it's not something you can go back and do. But... Essentially, you have to get to get that ninth title. You have to play twenty multiplayer matches and uh, get on the leaderboard. So I will be uh, enlisting somebody from the uh, AH One Hundred One community to help me get that mm. last one. Yeah, I'm just looking at the solution for that, and it looks like you can actually screw yourself over if mm-hmm. you do something wrong with it in yep. a way that means you have to delete your save and start again, basically. There's actually um, several people from the AH101 community that have this on their on their tag. Yes, um, almost everyone who... Uh, so the, uh, on my friends list, I, I've got people who have completed it. Uh, I've got you, who is going to have done about half of the list or a third of the list. And then every single other person has done exactly what you originally did and got a single achievement mm-hmm. in it without going any further so uh good luck getting support in that <laughs> one <laughs> uh big l and a Heizo, i can see are on that list so mm-hmm. they oh and jay black mm-hmm. so i would say those are your guys to pester <laughs> as well as chronos isret and spaceman mm-hmm. mm. okay greed core sounds okay <laughs> uh but now we can move on to the meat and potatoes, the game I really want to hear uh, talk about, which is Perfect Dark, Stone Cold Classic. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> uh, so Perfect Dark, obviously an old uh, N64 game that was remastered, I suppose you could say, mm-hmm. in as so far as any of these old N64 games are, to Xbox Live in March 2010, you started it in April 2010, so very close to release. Mm-hmm. 
However, it was a similar story. It's kind of hard to tell because the two achievements you got back then were for killing an enemy while dual wielding. Dual dual wielding? Almost as hard to say as it is to do, I'd imagine. And also for completing the very first level. There is only an achievement for completing the very first level and then completing the whole game. So I have no sense of whether you did any more than just that single level Mm -hmm. back in 2010. And then you came back and within a few days in February, completed it. So tell me what happened back in 2010 that meant you didn't complete it the first time. Yeah, so I probably got through um, the way that Perfect Dark is laid out. You've got um, several missions or several levels that make up a mission. So a mission is just like you're in this kind of environment or stage. Mm -hmm. So I got through the first three stages, which made up that first mission. And when I got to the second mission, which is the fourth stage, I kind of just got lost, honestly. Um, Mm -hmm. And um, there's not a great sense of navigation or any sort of map or objective marking and a lot of the you know, doors and corridors and yeah, they all just look the same. And you're yeah. just like, I don't know where I'm supposed to be going or so. Yeah, that's kind of probably hit that wall of uh, got lost. And uh, at, at the time I, you know, didn't have the proper motivation to, you know, go look up a video walkthrough or anything like that. And just kind of mm-hmm. say, okay, I'll move on to something else. And Anytime I went back and picked it up, I was like, oh, this is this is confusing. <laughs> just yeah, it back oh, I remember now. <laughs> I have no idea where I am. Exactly. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you on that one. Um, it's a game of its time. Uh, people, some people prefer that, you know, lack of hand-holding. But sometimes it's just nice to know that you're heading in roughly the right direction mm-hmm. uh, instead of going completely back to the beginning of the level. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there no enemies anymore? Oh, <laughs> right. I, yeah, I'm, I'm back at the beginning. Uh, I found that especially, at the I think, at the end in the alien spaceship. Mm. Uh, that's particularly bad for that. Did you play it back in the day in the original release in no i did not play it on the n64 um i did mm. play goldeneye which is obviously very uh perfect dark is very obviously influenced by um yes it's it's, it's almost uh you know it's spiritual uh, sequel it plays so similarly all the animations are so very similar mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you know the objectives how the the difficulties stack and uh, those sorts of things. Yeah, the whole the whole idea that uh, 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 the the higher level difficulty isn't just harder enemies, you know, lower life. It's also that you have to do more, right? You have right. to do like three or four objectives, right. and you can fail them as well. Like you yes. can you can screw yourself up in a mission mm. oh, by, yes. by like accidentally exploding something that you're supposed to, you know, collect or whatever. Right, and mm. there's no um, there's no checkpoints in the levels at all if you die you you're back to the beginning of the level or if you Mm -hmm. fail an objective you're back to the beginning of the level no i i did this a while ago i don't remember it doesn't have save states right is that am i right that's 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 correct Mm -hmm. yes you just you just start at at the beginning of the level now once you know where to go in a level the level is probably three to five minutes long you know um in Mm -hmm. fact you know most of I think all the levels have speed running kind of achievements uh, or, or tasks related to them where you have to run through them in like less than two minutes. So they're, they're not long levels, but when you're trying to figure out where you're going and you're kind of aimlessly wandering, you know, it can, it can take a while. Mm. And you didn't just complete the game on the easiest difficulty. You completed it on two difficulties last time we spoke you uh mentioned that the difficulties don't stack so you, you kind of simul played both difficulties did you is that right that's right yeah so um besides having uh this being on my never ending stories uh the special agent achievement popped up on my random to-do list and so i said okay well i'll knock knock these both out at one time because um, i said if i'm gonna play through special agent and you know 
half the battle is just figuring out where to go, what to do in each of these levels. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided as I'm playing through it on Special Agent, as soon as I beat the level on Special Agent, I just went back and played the same level on Agent. And it was like, it's it was, it was so easy relative mm -hmm. to playing on Special Agent, playing it on the Agent difficulty. Uh, so I was able to be efficient with knocking those both out at the same time. So that's kind of like normal and easy mode, I guess, equivalent. And then you've got Correct. perfect agent, which is the hard mode, which right. is um, quite a a rare achievement to get. Uh, do mm -hmm. you think you would challenge yourself to that? Um, yeah, possibly. I, I think I I could go for it along and along and make progress in each of these missions. Um, mm. The the one that scares me is that the the crown and glory achievement, which is earn yeah. all the leaderboard crowns, um, mm -hmm. because no one on my friends list has the full completion on this, and Waka has nineteen out of the twenty, <laughs> and that's the one that he doesn't have. Yeah, that tells you something. Yeah, uh -huh. it's um it's a tricky one. It's only completed by one percent of of gamers, which uh, with an eleven ratio, which. When you stack it up against some Game Pass games, it doesn't seem that high. But when you compare it to other games of its time and, you know, 360 games, Xbox Live games, that is a very l low completion rate, very high ratio. So mm -hmm. um, I've got a few people who have got it, but they are, you know, known hardcore gamers. Mm -hmm. um, most people in our community do not have it. And hats off if, to anyone who does. Right. You've left the game with kind of five achievements out of 20, 50 game score out of 200. There is some miscellaneous stuff in there that I think you could pick up. Uh, right. I think I've done like the you know, killing enemies with each of the different weapon types is pretty easy to kind of go back and pick mm -hmm. up. There's one which whenever I look at it, it pains me, which is <laughs> the, the one about the shooting range. Mm -hmm. Um tools of the trade get a bronze rating or better with all 32 weapons in the firing range you'll see it's buggy minus on that one and i got hit by the bug which <laughs> is that it doesn't it doesn't recognize one of my guns uh, you know, as having completed the firing range and the only solution there is to delete your entire save and oh. you know, just do it all again which requires you to go back through the game to get those weapons to allow you to use them on the range. Wow. So it's just frustrating. So yeah. I, I've never actually gone back to do some of the mop-up of the game just because that one bugged on me and it, it made me really cross. Uh -huh. But I did complete the story. What do you think about the story? Without spoilers, obviously, um, if we can avoid it, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's a kind of classic spy game with a kind of a fairly iconic lead kind of female protagonist although not, I don't think enough has been made of her since you know they did this and then Perfect Dark Zero it's been a long time uh, mm -hmm. since we had any more obviously we're getting a new one coming up as you kind of allude to it's it's kind of a spiritual kind of connection to James Bond the GoldenEye game it's kind of got that spy thriller thing going for it but it also has a whole heck of a lot of weird to it <laughs> and kind of goofiness. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you obviously you played it very recently now. Mm -hmm. w what do you feel about the story? Yeah, it uh, it was fun. You know, it was just, uh, you, you kind of think it's just going to be stereotypical, you know, just going through your normal, uh, your normal, uh, you know, spy kind of just story and fighting against this corporation or something like that. And then kind of the wackier elements that get thrown in there, you're kind of like, oh, they're they're going with that trope and you know that that science fiction element, uh, and it made it really uh, enjoyable to kind of see, okay, where are we going to for the next level, you know, and what are we gonna do with this? So, uh, mm -hmm. I I enjoyed it. You know, it's I feel like it didn't take itself too seriously. It was like, okay, we're going to you know, get the president of the United States involved in this, and now we're going to get aliens involved in this. Literally little little green men. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, and it's it's fun. It's goofy. It yeah, is goofy. Yeah. I, think, I think if you're not kind of expecting that and you want something a little bit more serious, this is maybe going to be like, uh, okay, that wasn't, that wasn't what I was expecting. Uh -huh. But I think if you just go with it, like you say, it's, it's entertaining enough. It's like... It's like uh, cowboys versus aliens, you know. It's not mm -hmm. the, not the best story, but it's a good like 
popcorn flick you know it's like <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. I, I, i'll be interested to see how they translate that in a kind of in the new game right because are, are they going to go all for that and make it this kind of kooky silly kind of goofy game because mm-hmm. I, I can't remember now because i did perfect dark zero did you do that one i've not done that yet I seem to remember there's there's elements of that, but I think it was maybe a little bit more serious. I, I, I struggle to remember now. It's been so long. But yeah, I'll be interested to see with the new game if they retain that kind of charisma and personality and wackiness, or if they try and make something a little the, bit uh, more ser- serious by a spy game. Joanna! El- Elvis, <laughs> uh, his uh, how he would talk to you all the time. It was just... yeah. Crack yeah. me up. Cool. Well, uh, so Greed Corp and Perfect Dark in the can. Um, I've been spying on your period summaries to see what else you've been doing. And I see you are also making some progress in a couple of your other never ending story games. Do you want to give a little tease as to what they are? Sure. One that I plan on finishing soon, hopefully, since it's in my random to-do list this month, is uh, Mercenaries 2. And then another one that I've been making some progress on is Outland. Oh, yeah. Okay. So two more Xbox Live Arcade games <laughs> from 20... Well, 2010 well, and Outland was from 2011. So. Yeah, Mercenaries 2 is actually uh, is, uh, Ooh, is a retail... Yeah, yeah, yeah. A full game. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> does that mean we'll have more to talk about probably not <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you blow things up <laughs> well um anything else you wanted to touch on since we talked last time about prince of persia classic i know that since then uh, you have finished uh, prince of persia classic so i wanted to find out how that experience was for you oh you're too kind uh, here i am interviewing people about their completions and no one wants to interview me but but here you are pulling me up on it uh yeah you it was actually you that inspired me to do this so it was on my list i had fully resigned myself to skipping it because i remembered my history with the game which wasn't great and then i sat with you and you said actually the timer doesn't matter it's not all that long it's not all that difficult really nowadays because guides and walkthroughs are are freely available and, and very kind of helpful and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. And then I just did in a couple of nights. And it was exactly as you said. I didn't stress about the timer. I was able to follow guides to kind of see the the optimal routes um, through the game and avoid some of the, the pitfalls, literally. <laughs> um, I even managed to get all the collectible life potions, which then really helped because where I did struggle a bit with combat, it made it very easy to get through those areas with the extra life and um yeah rattled through it and i'm glad i did actually and i'm you know i'm I'm in a position now where similar to you all all that i've left is that hardcore run which i will never do and i'm happy (laughs) with that um and i can happily call that game done so yeah thank you i'm glad i did that one yeah yeah what did you think about the uh you know i I think last time we talked about the the controls and the mechanics of the game what what did you think about that it is so kind of floaty sticky and kind of weird and it's exactly kind of what you said which is you're trying to time jumping through a a, like a a gate that's opening and closing with a kind of a like a guillotine kind of Mm -hmm. thing and unless you time it right he kind of just flops forward but then doesn't quite commit to the jump (laughs) and then just kind of slowly steps into the the thing and you're like no what are you doing and and yeah and so many times i would i would die and i really felt like i'm not great at platformers i'm not great at like twitchy games Uh, i never i never do well in those in in general but so many times in that game i knew it definitely was not me (laughs) it was it was the game i'm sure i timed that just right or, or close enough and i don't know why you're taking those extra steps because you are definitely going to die now or like the the momentum thing the momentum thing was so weird because sometimes you know you'd be standing still and you'd move off and he'd like start running and sometimes he just kind of slowly kind of like eased into a run and that was the difference between making a jump or failing a jump mm-hmm. right that's right did the the controls or the the lack of controls playing to your decision to not go back for that final achievement 
Oh god, yeah. I actually didn't die a huge amount of times, but there were a few sections where I died quite a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, and they they tended to be towards the kind of end of the game. And sometimes it was kind of like these cheap deaths. And I was like, it would be so frustrating to get most of the way there and then fail. That kind of gaming isn't fun for me. That kind of, that level of challenge. Mm-hmm. I, I completely appreciate the people who can do that. And that's what they love. You know, the awoos of the world. Um, but that's not me. I play mm-hmm. games mostly to enjoy them, and mostly I play the games for story. <laughs> and mm-hmm. this is this is not that. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I am glad to have experienced it and kind of to, to have gone back. So yeah, moving on. I'm doing uh, Doom and Doom Two now classics. So I'm and I'm, I am really enjoying those. Um, having never actually played them back in the day properly, apart from you know the old level here and there. Well, cool. I'll be glad to hear when when you complete this. Okay, GT the Option fan, uh, thank you again for joining me and thank you for listening to my little story about Prince of Persia as well. And I'll see you next time on Neverending Stories. Bye.